हेलो स्टूडेंट्स माई सेल्फ रोमिंदर कौर एंड दिस इज चैप्टर नंबर सेवन एवोल्यूशन एंड सेकेंड वीडियो लेक्चर वी आर स्टार्टिंग विद द टॉपिक एवोल्यूशन ऑफ लाइफ फॉर्म्स अ थ्यूरी एज ऑलरेडी वी हैव स्टडेड वेरियस काइंड ऑफ थ्यूरीज लाइक बिग बैंग थ्यूरी थ्यूरी ऑफ स्पॉन्टेनियस जनरेशन थ्यूरी ऑफ पैंसपर्मिया एंड इवन द मिलर एक्सपेरिमेंट विच इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट now we are going to study about charles darwin that how he has given the theory of evolution which he is famous for if we talk about various kind of religious literatures they tell us that life has existed as same as it was in the past and it will remain the same also so there are three ideas behind this theory so it is written on the second line this theory has three connotations so connotations means ideas the very first idea that every species was created as such by the god or the nature second that the creation was same in the past and it will remain same in the future and third they are saying that earth is only about 4000 years old but all of these ideas or connotations they were challenged in 19th century by one scientist h m s beagle when he was on his sea voyage voyage means journey he found that existing living forms they have some similarities and few dissimilarities from the species that were found in the way back even during the same time charles darwin he has proposed his theory of evolution in the form of survival of the fittest so natural selection explains adaptation he has written one book known as origin of species which was published in 1859 where he has told that how one species they can give rise to another which we call as speciation how can these changes occur because our resources are very limited we cannot stay in such kind of conditions where the resources are unlimited no everything is limited either food water or any other resources such as land due to this the competition will occur it can be between plants or animals so who will survive the fittest will survive let's take an example of a pond in which only single kind of species of fishes are living their food their resources their land and other climatic conditions will be same because they belong to same species ultimately only those species will survive who will be fit who can reproduce they can give rise to the good number of progeny and those who will get weak they will die it means the survival is due to natural selection in class 10th also you have studied in chapter heredity and evolution speciation can result into any natural accident like the elephant foot so the red color species of those beetles they change into green beetles or it may happen that the crow who is acting as a predator can eat up all the red kind of beetles because they were easily visible due to their background and then new species that survived they were green in color speciation means the new kind of species they are resulting due to evolution some kind of changes that takes place and these changes are not so instantaneous but it takes million of years to change from one life form to the another there are not only the same species which has existed in the past and the same are now no dinosaurs which existed in the past now they are extinct and many of the species which were not in the past they are present now so it is just the evolution which is taking place very gradually gradual term means slowly so these life forms they can either change or they can remain same according to the certain kind of environmental conditions if we study about charles darwin so he was a biologist from 1809 to 1882 even he was a naturalist and best known for his theory of evolution and he has given the process of natural selection in his book origin of species he came from the family of scientist he went for voyage sea voyage for five continuous years 
and there he found the variation of species in the galapagos island then he studied both physiology of plants and animals and one mountain is also named after his name so in this paragraph it has been talked about the same thing as we have talked earlier so if in a pond different species of fishes are kept that will have more survival rate because different fish species they will have different kind of habits their food resources will be different there will be less competition among them so their survival rate will be high let us also remember that alfred wallis who also came with similar kind of identifications during the same time so all the living organisms they share similarities and share common ancestors common ancestors means as we say during the evolution of man how it was looking like monkeys and apes and then how its vertebral column gets straightened the brain capacity has increased so those ancestors which are present in the past time but now we look fully different from them now let us study the next topic how can we get any proof or evidence that evolution has happened so fossils are the best evidences which can tell us from which we can get surety that yes some change has happened with the time how we come to know that dinosaurs were existing in the past it is only due to the fossils so what are fossils they are the dead remains of hard parts of both plants and animals they can be found in rocks in the form of sediments so how can we check that what is the age of those fossils which has buried under the soil some time so there are two methods by which we can do it so number one method is relative dating so in this we will dig up the soil and the fossils which will be closer to the upper surface of the soil they will be more recent fossils which we get in more deeper layers they will be more older and the second kind of method is called as radioactive dating by which we can just detect the ratios of different isotopes of the same element in the fossil material so here the isotopes which can be used they can be carbon isotopes like c12 then c14 carbon isotopes are present so the study of fossils of different life forms on earth is called as paleontology and the second kind of evidence that is given it is shown the fetal development the growth of the baby of fish salamander tortoise chicken and human if you have to find out what is common among all these five different living organism so the common thing is the early embryonal stage looks similar to one another it will be very difficult to differentiate that which one of the embryo belongs to fish which one belongs to human and which one belong to other organisms because gill slits are present in all five tail is present in all five why gill slits are present in the embryo of humans also we have lungs for respiration then what is the need of gill slits in the embryonal stage that is very during the beginning stage of the fetal development it shows that we all have common ancestors earlier when the earth has just started and life forms just started existing everything was developed in water every creature was aquatic in nature so during that time everything which was surviving that was in taking oxygen from the in the dissolved water so it has remained same but after mid stage embryo in the second picture you can now differentiate that the first one is the fish second salamander third tortoise and so on the humans so these differences has brought up that we all have common ancestors so this is also one of the evidence of evolution that certain kind of changes that has happened it is the result that new species has developed because of climatic conditions environmental factors around this was proposed by ernst haeckel under the embryonic development of all the vertebrates 
but these changes are absent in adult we all look different but the embryos they are all same the embryonal stage of human is also called as vestigial organs vestigial organs are those which are present in our body but they are not playing any particular role so let's study in this picture they have shown the evolutionary relationship of various kinds of animals that how dinosaurs develop into crocodiles and birds if you see from the lower case the ancestors of dinosaurs are brachiosaurus and stegosaurus from brachiosaurus see how the changes happened and they developed into tyrannosaurus in case of stegosaurus they changed and they form triceratops and certainly in between the connecting link came connecting link you all have studied in class 10 archaeopteryx is the connecting link between reptiles and birds so dinosaurs they are coming under the class reptiles so archaeopteryx in which feathers were shown that feathers which can help in flying pteryx lead to evolution of certain birds such as pteranodon so the birds they have evolved from reptiles by which archaeopteryx act as a connecting link so dinosaurs they have they are extinct now and birds have been evolved because of the changing environmental conditions such kind of similarities they have brought us that we have to think about whether we have common ancestors or not so for this we have two kind of evolutions one is called divergent and second is called as convergent evolution homologous organs are those organs which have same structural pattern but they have different functions so if you look upon this picture the four limbs of different kind of organisms they may look same but the functions they are performing that is different so these kind of structures or organs are called as homologous organs kind of evolution can give us a clear evidence that we all has evolved from a common ancestor and we have same developmental origin so this homology indicates common ancestor we have certain other examples also such as vertebrate heart or brains in plant also the thorn in bougainvillea and tendrils in cucurbita they may look same but the functions are different the thorn in bougainvillea they help in protection so that no other grazing animal can eat upon it and in cucurbita tendrils they help in climbing so that the easily sport can be taken up so homology is based on divergent evolution and on the other side we have analogous organs if you look upon the wings of butterfly and on the wings of bats you can see functions are same both butterfly and birds or bats they are using these wings for flying but their structure is exactly different this it is clear analogous structures which have evolved the ability to fly from different ancestors wings of butterflies bats and birds they have same function but different structures analogous structures example is also in human eye and squid eye so eyes are used for vision but their structure is fully different next is the picture of potato and sweet potato so both they contain starch both are underground but one is stem and other is root similar example is with the flippers of penguins and dolphins so we can say it is the similar habitat that has resulted in selection of similar features but they have the same function but different structure the same line of argument is there that proteins and genes they are also showing similarity performing a particular function but it gives to a common ancestry that each and every plant and organism they contain proteins and genes it means we all have evolved from same common as ancestor during agriculture horticulture which has been started very recently so that has made up the domestic crops 
we have started keeping dogs buffaloes cows and we have started making their hybrids but earlier if we see the breeding programs they have created different kind of breeds which are looking different from one another but still they belong to the same class of mammals that is dogs next topic is natural selection in action of the moth this has been studied in lower classes also that earlier when there were no industries so the trees or the barks of the different kind of plants and other surfaces they were white in color white means light in color so the moths or the insects which were living on them they were also light colored but once industrialization started up and the smoke the soot these polluted particles or the suspended particulate matter when they started depositing on either bark of the trees or any other surfaces the background color changed dark or black in color slowly and gradually these moths their color also started changing this has led to evolution so this has been performed in england so in 1850s before industrialization white moths were there but after industrialization they have found dark winged moths picture you can see white winged moth and dark winged moth first in unpolluted area and second in the polluted area what was a need for change in color because if the background will be light in color and the moths will be black in color darker then predators will easily find them and they will eat them so for their safety for their protection it was a need of the hour that naturally their color gets changed due to some changes in the genes so here the topic of lichens is also there lichens are what they are the symbionts algae and fungus when they join with each other and mutually help each other that association is called as lichens so how they act as a pollution indicators whenever you go to hilly regions or mountain areas you can see on the bark of the tree lichens are grown but when you visit any polluted site no lichens can be seen so they can never grow in the unpolluted areas so moths they were able to camouflage themselves means they can hide in the background there are different kind of insects which are present which can change their color according to the surrounding due to the better adaptation and so that they can increase their population size but as we have started spraying various kind of insecticides pesticides herbicides it has resulted into more resistant varieties that if we spray 5 ml of herbicides on the plants the kind of insects few of them will die and other will survive why are they survive because of continuous use of this insecticides have made them resistant their body has taken up such microbes against them that they do not die simply as human beings if we keep on using these antibiotics or antiviral medicines without precautions or without the advice of the doctor our body will also show resistant against these drugs and we will not cure from different kind of diseases this is the example of evolution by anthropogenic action kindly note down anthropogenic action means artificial man made action we have resulted in changes in the bodies of insects pest and our bacterias which are present in our gut so it is a stochastic process based on the chance events in nature and chance mutation in the organism that our body started showing certain kind of changes to the surrounding environment our body bacteria which are harmful they started showing resistance towards different kind of medicines so it is always advised that whichever medicine you want to take that should be under the prescription of the doctor otherwise your body will start behaving differently thank you students